1994 was the year apartheid ended in South Africa. Nelson Mandela was elected president and under his leadership South Africa made steady progress in the next 5 years. His successor Thabo Mbeki was president for the next 9 years. And uh, aside from presiding over a commodity super cycle wow. where prices for natural resources, something South Africa has in abundance, rose to new highs, things did not change much. South Africa continued to see average economic growth of 4.2%, which is fine for a developed country, but not for a country in which a significant portion of its people live in third world conditions. Unemployment continued to stay high, and the HIV epidemic claimed more victims. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. Thankfully, this man did not have a YouTube channel. The country was also failing to tackle crime and the brain drain of its wealthy and educated wasn't stopping. Despite these issues, South Africa continued to tackle poverty while the debt and deficit were reduced and stayed low. But for the country to take the next step, it needed a reform-minded and smart leader who can tackle corruption in the government, make long-term plans to reduce racial inequality, and to diversify the economy. Enter Jacob Zuma. <laughs> an anti-apartheid activist who rose up the ranks and became the ANC presidential candidate in 2008 he does have a couple of corruption cases on him but those are dropped on a technicality through his excellent singing and dancing that swept many south africans off their feet and probably because he was the ANC candidate zuma becomes the fourth post apartheid president of south africa i mean who else are you going to vote for the economic freedom fighters so now that he is in power what does zuma do well look at the title of the video it's pretty clear In order to understand Zuma's time as president, you need to remember two things: the Guptas and state capture. Under Zuma, the Guptas, a business family with close relations with Jacob Zuma, gained a lot of influence in the government and through Zuma were able to extract contracts enriching themselves. The Guptas were also able to make cabinet appointments and were probably giving Zuma policy advice. An example of this influence was an airplane carrying Gupta family members being able to land at a South African Air Force base without formal permission they were then given police escorts to a wedding they were attending this control of the government by private interests was given the name state capture south african state institutions have historically suffered from corruption for a long time but under zuma it reached new highs zuma abolished the scorpions a body that investigated organized crime and corruption and replaced it with the hawks in which zuma had greater control The government also began undermining other organizations like the South African Revenue Service and South African Airways. Mismanagement of state-owned companies made things worse. Just look at Eskom, South Africa's electric utility company, which by the end of Zuma's tenure was overstaffed by 6000 people, was suffering losses with piles of debt despite being a monopoly and which couldn't do its one job of providing a consistent supply of electricity. In Zuma's 9 years, the price of electricity went up by 350%. Yet the company still struggles to stay afloat. Here too much raining. <laughs> his economic policies were even worse. Most of his reforms were seen as bad for investors and his constant changing of finance ministers after they asked too many questions wasn't a good sign either. The result was investors pulling money out of the country and the currency losing value. One of the few positive things under Zuma was his handling of the HIV epidemic which is pretty good. The country even saw its life expectancy go up. The government also spent more money on welfare and infrastructure. How did he pay for this? Well, the high prices for natural resources, which uh, crashed in 2014. So now what? No problem. Just borrow the money, and borrow he did, with the debt to GDP going up from 26.5% to 53%. He resigned in 2017 after being put under pressure from his own party, but it was probably a little too late. The damage to South Africa was done, and it seems like the effects of his disastrous reign will be felt for many years. Let's ask Zuma what he thinks.